Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Tide Connect TV series interview. Uh, my name is Michael Dunnett from the Tide series, and I'm joined today by Nate Spangler of Aldevron, Director of Innovation and Strategy. Uh, Nate and I today are going to be discussing a working concept around mRNA from sequencing to GMP and GMP source with one vendor. Welcome, Nate. Hi, Michael. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Um, so we have a first question for you today. Can you describe, please, Aldevron's mRNA manufacturing experience? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, you know, for many years, Aldevron has been excited by the potential um, for in vitro transcribed messenger RNA. <clears throat> as a uh, new type of drug or vaccine that's going to rapidly fill gaps not met by current medicines and emerging therapies. Um, so about five years ago, we began making plans, and three years ago, we made our first batch of mRNA for clinical studies. And since then, we've produced clinical-grade mRNA for a wide range of uses, including cancer immunotherapies, protein replacement therapies, infectious disease vaccines. And by doing this, you know, we've come to understand the range of, you know, product and client requirements across these fields of use. So our ability to make mRNA um, is supported also by more than 20 years of experience manufacturing DNA and recombinant proteins for preclinical, clinical and commercial uses. Um, there's been a huge growth, obviously, and an interest about mRNA. Um, with that growth, what outsourcing challenges does mRNA biopharma face? Um, you know, because mRNA for vaccines and therapies is new, um, there's not a lot of suppliers of raw materials and process proteins that are needed for its production, uh, especially in quality grades that are suitable for use in GMP. Um, and, you know, on top of that, with a sudden and unexpected demand created by mRNA-based COVID vaccines, you know, shortages are causing delays. And we seek to minimize that with proactive sourcing and contingency plans. Um, another challenge relates to the general lack of clinical experience with mRNA combined with the pressure of short sponsor timelines. Um, so this is this requires manufacturers to rethink well-established cadences and production quality control and quality assurance without compromising what we deliver. And um, obviously when developing an mRNA production process um, that will be scaled up, what are the most important considerations? Um, you know, there are many, and I think first and foremost, it's scalability of the process, especially downstream steps. Um, what worked well in R&D and preclinical stages might not be practical for later stages of development. Um, this could be a purification method that doesn't scale up easily, uh, like size exclusion chromatography or HPLC, or it could be chromatography media and raw materials that are very expensive and difficult to source. So it's important to develop uh, process early on that's going to be robust and economical at the large scales needed for later clinical and commercial stages. And this is where a CMO's experience can be highly valuable to sponsors. For the design as well of mRNA therapeutics, vaccines, what are some important considerations? You know, the, the design of the DNA template and the mRNA transcript are very important, and much of that's going to happen before the CMO becomes involved. Uh, for example, untranscribed sequence elements are going to be important to how the mRNA vaccine or therapy works. Um, certain applications will need to minimize the immune stimulating activity of in vitro transcribed mRNA, and this could involve the use of base modified NTPs and sequence optimization. Uh, the way the mRNA will be used, therapy or vaccine, um, in addition to other requirements, that's going to impact the choice of capping method and DNA template promoter design. And the poly-A tail requirement, such as exact length or maximal length, um, that's going to determine the tailing method, which is also, and, th and that'll also impact the DNA template design. Um, choice of restriction enzyme to manufacture the linear DNA template can have a a big impact on the template manufacturing costs and quality. Um, so, you know, if any of these points needs to be reevaluated uh, when sponsors engage the CMO to scale up manufacturing, unexpected delays can result. So it's recommended to begin working with your CMO as early as possible to ensure a smooth transition when it's time to scale up. Okay, thank you. And uh, 
final question we had today, how will mRNA affect future vaccine development and manufacturing in your opinion? Um, I, you know, for, I think for a long time, mRNA has been seen as a potentially better way to make vaccines against infectious diseases, especially in response to emerging threats. And this has been shown to be true with COVID-19. An mRNA-based vaccine against a new disease can be developed and made more quickly, easily and economically than a, a new vaccine using uh, conventional technologies. Um, so, you know, the manufacturing requirements for mRNA vaccines are simpler than for other types of vaccines, which makes it easier to rapidly scale up to meet urgent need. And as a manufacturer of mRNA, you know, we can satisfy a wide range of needs without having to develop product specific process, processes from scratch and without having to build product dedicated facilities for each new disease. Okay. Nate, thank you very much for your, uh, for your time today. That uh, was really interesting. Thank you for, uh, for spending the time with us on Tide TV. Um, any further comments, any final comments you'd like to make? Uh, no, I, I, none that I have to add. I, I very much appreciate this opportunity to, to be here and, and speak with you and, and for our TIDES attendees. So, you know, once again, thanks for having me on. And thanks. Thanks a lot, mate. You're welcome.